Since we want our microservices to run on Apache Mesos, we need a suitable Mesos framework to launch our applications. Marathon is a Mesos framework that schedules and executes long-running tasks, specifically Docker applications. You can think of Marathon as a private platform-as-a-service for Docker apps. For this course, we're going to deploy our Dockerized microservices using the Marathon HTTP API. Besides the API, Marathon offers a rich user interface for managing tasks. Marathon makes deploying and scaling an application trivial. Any action that the Marathon UI supports can also be accessed via HTTP API, such as listing all applications, creating and starting new applications, updating or upgrading applications, many more. The Marathon API is asynchronous, meaning the client does not block while Marathon performs long-running functions, such as deploying a new application. This makes performing deployments in a blocking manner the responsibility of the client. We'll cover that when we implement our deployer. Each Marathon task or application has a number of common fields. ID, which is the unique identifier for an application, usually namespaced in a multiple environment situation. Image, which denotes the specific Docker image and tag to use. In this course, we'll actually use the Docker image tag to version our applications, but you can also use Marathon's version, which is a timestamped version. All tasks can configure a health check in the form of an HTTP endpoint or script for Marathon to periodically ping to ensure that all running instances are alive and well. All tasks can configure ports to expose publicly from the Docker container. You can also override the command that Docker container should run. More about this later. Since our applications will be running in Docker, we'll need to expose ports from within the containers to the host machine. With Marathon, you can configure the mapping of the exposed ports within a container to public port on the Mesos slave using host port and container port. Host port is the public Mesos slave port, and the container port is the port that's being used within the container. For any microservice publishing an HTTP endpoint, we'll need to configure these two. Service port is also configurable, but this is typically used for load balancers. As I mentioned before in the Mesos overview, the Mesos master periodically makes resource offers to the frameworks and it's up to the framework scheduler to accept or reject the offer. There are two ways Marathon will reject an offer. There are no deployments or updates that need to be executed, or none of the offered resources meet the constraints configured on the task definitions. For example, if one instance of a microservice is deployed on all available hosts, then a unique hostname constraint will cause any offer for a specific task to fail. Constraints like unique can use task definition attributes whereas constraints like cluster rely on attributes configured on the Mesos slave. The cluster constraint is typically used to manage different software environments in a single Mesos cluster. So let's talk about the API. Here's an example post request to create and start a new Docker application on Marathon. Note here that the application ID is namespaced. This is a good practice if you manage multiple environments on the same Mesos cluster. The application ID will be used uniquely to identify this task on every request, be it an upgrade, update, or scaling. Here's where we specify the number of CPUs as well as the memory required for the task. These values will be used by the Marathon scheduler to determine the right resource offer to accept. Constraints can be specified when creating or updating an application. They're represented as a three-slotted array. The constraint configuration shown will ensure that there can only be one instance of this application per individual host. This is a slightly more complicated example of constraints. In this case, the application should only be deployed to the staging environment. This is using the cluster constraint, which ensures that tasks are only executed on Mesos slave nodes that are configured with the given attribute. In this case, the Mesos attribute name is environment, and the value is staging. Since our tasks are microservices packaged as Docker images, we need to specify the specific image to use. For our purposes, when we build our microservices, we will rev the Docker image tag and use that as our version. Here, we're deploying version 1.2.1 of our microservice. One of the most important aspects of deploying Docker applications to a dynamic environment like Mesos is port mapping. If we don't map our Docker ports to public facing ports on the Mesos slave machines, no other services in our distributed architecture will be able to communicate with our service. The key port attributes are container port, which is the Docker internal port, and host port, which is the Mesos slave port. So here we want to access our application running on 8080 inside the Docker at port 8080 publicly. There's a slight problem with this. How do we avoid port collisions on the Mesos slaves with lots of microservices? We could assign well-known ports to the individual applications, or we can use the special value zero for host port. When Mesos makes a resource offer, it presents the framework scheduler with a list of available ports on the slave machine. Specifying zero maps the static internal Docker port to a random public port on the Mesos slave that is guaranteed not to collide with other applications.
This brings about other complexities in our architecture that we can easily solve with our service discovery mechanism. So now our staging deployment configuration is almost ready to be submitted. We're deploying three instances of version 1.2.1 of our microservice to the staging environment, and we'll be mapping its public HTTP port to a random port on the Mesos slaves. This will work, but we won't be as resilient as we like. If Marathon knows the general health of our application, it can monitor it and restart it if it becomes unhealthy or unavailable. Marathon can also roll back a deployment if it deems the application unhealthy. We can configure this as well. By adding a health checks attribute to our task configuration, we can specify an endpoint that Marathon will pull. We specify port index of zero so that Marathon knows to use the host port of the service that we specified. We can also specify grace period, polling interval, timeout, and a max number of retries. A simple health endpoint should return a 200 if the application is healthy and a 503 status code if the application is not healthy. We'll discuss this in a later chapter. Using the put app endpoint allows us to update the configuration of a task. For many of the updates that are possible, you only need to specify the attribute to update. Note we specify the full application ID and the URL path now. In this case, we simply want Marathon to scale out our application from three instances to five instances. Like the post endpoint, this operation is asynchronous, so the progress should be monitored by the client. You should only create a task once using the post endpoint. Once the task has been created, any additional updates should be using put. Notice that this request payload is identical to the post, so this put would be a no-op. What if we just built a new version of our microservice and we'd like to upgrade? We simply make the put request with the newer Docker image tag 1.2.2. This will cause Marathon to perform a blue-green deployment. A blue-green deploy involves starting up an equal number of new versions of an application before shutting down older instances. This proves to be a much safer mechanism for deployment, especially if you can measure the health of new instances. If the deployment fails for any reason, the new instances can be shut down and the application never took any downtime. The downside to this type of deployment is the fact that it requires more capacity for a cluster, because you can potentially have double the desired instances for any service running. You see here that we have two instances of my microservice at version 1.2.1 running on the two Mesos slaves. Since we're deploying version 1.2.2, Marathon will start up two new instances. Remember earlier when I mentioned that Marathon allows configurable health checks? This is one case where they come in handy. Marathon will pull the new instances health endpoints periodically until they come online and return a successful HTTP status code. If you have a robust health endpoint on your application, it's very unlikely that you'll have a deployment that causes downtime or failures. Here we see that both new instances have successful health checks. So Marathon can safely shut down the old instances. So now we're back at the desired instance count for my microservice, just at a newer version. Although deployment is complete, Marathon will continue to pull each health endpoint and shut down unhealthy instances and restart them, possibly on another host. This feature of Marathon affords us great amount of resiliency. If machines go bad for any reason, our health checks can trigger Marathon to move our services to another machine and maintain capacity. Marathon also has a nice user interface that supports most of the functionality of the API. We'll demo this later in the course but all of our microservices will always be deployed in an automated fashion using the HTTP API.